All right, Go123 is officially out. It is officially released. I'm over at reddit.com slash r slash goaling. We're going to click this, check out the official release notes in this video. We're going to talk about all the things I think are exciting, all the things I think are worth talking about, highlighting. And overall, let's just check out what this release for Go is all about. So if you go ahead and click this link, this takes us to the Go123 official release notes. And uh, as the introduction reads, the latest Go release of version 123 arrives six months after Go 122. Most of its changes are in the implementation of the toolchain, runtime, and libraries. As always, the release maintains the Go 1 promise of compatibility. We expect almost all Go programs to continue to compile and run as before. And it goes right now to changes to language. And I think this first one is arguably, in my opinion, the biggest major change at a surface level. But when you go into it, I think there's more intricacies to this release. So the main change they're talking about here is the range over funk experiment as part of the language. So the range clause in a four range loop now accepts iterator functions of the following types. You can have uh, three signatures, one without a parameter, one with a key parameter, and then one signature with a key value parameter, all returning bools, as range expressions. Clause of the iterator argument function produce the iteration values for the four range loop. For details, see the iter package documentation and the language spec. So I actually made a whole video on Go123 function iterators, which is basically what that whole thing is. I think it kind of speaks for itself because if you look at some of the syntax for iterators, uh, I go deeper into detail. It's really not the prettiest syntax. Here is a quick example of an iterator function and the use case of how you can use iterators. And so there's lots of, you know, a lot of people like them, a lot of people don't like them. I'll let you watch that video. Link will be in the description down below. But they also mentioned the new edition of the iter package, which is now part of the standard library. Now, the iter package is, as you may guess, it's something completely related to iterator functions in Go. This was actually kind of experimented for Go 122, so you could use the experimental flag to run this and have early access to this. But essentially, the iter package provides us with two exported types, seek and seek2, which are essentially method signatures or function signatures. And then they also provide us with some very handy functions like pull one and pull two. So you can go ahead and click here. So this pull one and pull two. So I'm not going to go into detail of this. I think this is just the major release and major thing to talk about with go 123. However, you know, I personally don't think iterators are going to be adopted all that well in the language. I think they're kind of going to be like generics, like the team made an attempt to include something like this into the Go ecosystem. But I think there's just too much friction with how Go is used, how it is implemented, the way people think of Go and the introduction of iterators. But that's just my opinion. Let me know what you think in the comment section down below. The next part that I want to talk about is kind of going completely under the radar, which I think is kind of really funny, but it's telemetry. So Golang and telemetry, if you don't know, there's quite a history there. But let me just read this section here. Starting in Go 123, the Go tool chain can collect usage and breakage statistics that help the Go team understand how the Go tool chain is is used and how well it is working. We refer to these statistics as Go Telemetry. Already some alarm bells should be going off. Go Telemetry is an opt-in system controlled by the Go Telemetry command. By default, the toolchain program collects statistics in counter files that can be inspected locally but are otherwise unused. To help us keep Go working well and understand Go usage, please consider opting into Go Telemetry by running Go Telemetry on. In that mode, anonymous scan reports are uploaded to telemetry.go.dev weekly. So what this is, is basically Go already collects information and data on how you use Go or things related to if there's crashes or implementations and different statistics, just all sorts of telemetry. It's being collected, whether you like it or not. The main difference is when you opt into the system, what appears to happen is that telemetry.go.dev will have the ability to basically pull these files, these telemetry files that exist locally into these dashboards, but into the Go team's control. And if you go to telemetry.go.dev, it's safe to say there's not a lot of people opting in. You can see all charts, all red right data, the aggregate from August 6th to August 12th. So just shy of one week. There's really not that many people using. You can see the number of raw reports is, you know, not that many here. 
So there's not that many people who are uh, using this and for good reason. I mean, it's kind of strange in my opinion to allow telemetry data on how you use the programming language. I know it's opt-in, so it's not that bad, but just the fact that data is being collected and is available to them and they even have this ability to do so is a little eyebrow raising and kind of makes me you know, question a little bit of tactics used here, especially considering when GoTelemetry was kind of collecting data back in the day, which is a whole uh, fiasco regarding Go and how it collects user data. But going through the release notes on more of a pleasant side, another really cool tidbit here is the new Go mod tidy dash div flag. Now this is really cool. It causes the command not to modify the files, but instead print the necessary changes as a unified diff. It exists with a non-zero code if the updates are needed. I think this is pretty cool. It's like a safety before you run go mod tidy, you can add the dash diff flag to see kind of what the difference will be, what the effect of go mod tidy would be. So I think this is just a nice quality of life, a nice little precaution before doing something in your go.mod, go.sum files. Another thing is in the compiler section. So the build time overhead to building with PGO, profile gut optimization, has been reduced significantly. Previously, large builds could see 100% plus build time increase from enabling PGO. In Go 1.23, overhead should be in the single digit percentage, which is always pretty cool. PGO is something that I think was introduced in Go 1.19 or Go 1.20. I don't exactly remember, but it's supposed to optimize a lot of the performance for Go, you know, Go compilers and just running your Go code. But I think it's still fairly new. So there's going to be some growing pains, if you will, with PGO, but it's nice to see that they're continuously improving this. Uh, and then I think the major thing is all obviously when it comes to release notes, always pay attention to the standard library, especially with something like Go, where kind of the one of the main attraction points of the entire programming language is the standard library and what it provides. So I kind of went over this. There's nothing too significant. I would say nothing like groundbreaking in terms of the standard library. Obviously, we talked that now in the uh, introduction of iterators, there's a whole bunch of new packages like the new iter package and the slices package adds several functions that work with iterators. Here is the list. Same thing with maps. The thing that I'm actually kind of excited for is the new structs package. So in Go 121 or 122, they introduced the slices package and the maps package. And now they introduced the struct package, which provides types for struct fields that modify properties of the containing struct type, such as memory layout. So right now, the only exported type is the host layout. So obviously, it's a very new package. But I think it's cool. I like the direction that goes going into that of provides libraries and functionalities for structs, slices, maps, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. And uh, here's another one in the database slash SQL standard library. Errors returned by driver value R implementations are now wrapped for improved error handling during operations like DB query, DB exec and DB query row. This is really cool. It's going to add a better just overall logging system and uh, debugging and tracing when you use the standard library, the SQL standard library. And yeah, there's a bunch of cool stuff here, small improvements, uh, small, you know, ability and, and quality of life improvements. But overall, I think Go123 is going to be one of those releases that's going to be known for one thing, which is going to be the iterator implementation of Go. I made a whole video about this, like I said before, I'm not a fan of them. I don't see myself using iterators all that much in my Go implementation. Let me know if you do or if I'm potentially missing something. But kind of the uh, the glowing thing is definitely uh, the telemetry and, uh, you know, the, the opt-in system system as you will. But let me know what you guys think down below. What do you think of Go 123? What do you expect for Go 124? Let me know in the comment section down below. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Click the subscribe button if you haven't. Like, help this video, and I'll see you next time. Peace.